This tutorial is about raster map algebra in GRASGIS. There are two basic types of data in GIS, raster data and vector data. We'll be dealing with raster data today for map algebra. There are two types of rasters, rasters with discrete data and with continuous data. This is an example of discrete data. This is a land cover map. There are seven categories, seven discrete categories. Each one has a value assigned to it. Values of one in the raster are for tree canopy. Values of two are for grass and shrubs, three bare soil, and so forth. If I select the land cover layer in the legend and the query tool in the map display and I click on the map, if I click on the green cells, I'll see they have a value of one. If I click on the dark red, see they have a value of five for buildings. The tan, a value of two for grass and shrubs. There are hard boundaries here. I go straight from one category to the next category. In continuous data, like elevation data, for example, it's a continuous gradient of values. So if I click on the slope with a query tool with the elevation map highlighted, I'll see that I have a value. In this case, it's a floating point number, a number with decimals. So I start at the bottom of the slope. I'm at 29, 30, 35, and so forth. So rather than having numbers that stand for, for example, discrete classes and categories, here the numbers represent a continuous gradient. We'll work with both, both discrete and continuous data in Map Algebra today. Map Algebra, we can use to write expressions that work on either one or many rasters, um, expressions with logical, mathematical, bitwise operations, and mathematical and statistical functions. And from one or many rasters, we can create a new raster map. So we're going to work with elevation, surface, and land cover data to extract the forest canopy determine the height of the trees above the ground, and then also make a nice figure ground map of buildings, buildings with trees. So without further ado, let's start grass and begin the tutorial. You'll be using the Governor's Island data set for grass GIS. You can find this on my website in the GIS for Designers course download this, extract it, and move it to your GRASS data directory. You'll start GRASS in the Governor's Island location. So start a new session of GRASS. Browse and find your GRASS data directory. We set our grass data directory. Now find the New York State Plain Feet Governor's Island location, and we're going to create a new map set called Map Algebra for today. Since I've already created it, I'm going to make a new one called Demo. Just to remind you, we use the permanent map set for reference data. 
and we create other map sets for new data we create in this project. Okay, so we started grass. We're going to begin by adding the two raster maps, elevation and surface 2017, the digital elevation model and the digital surface model. I can use either d.rast, the add raster button, or add multiple maps. This time I'll do add multiple maps and make sure the map type is raster. And the map set, I'll pick from permanent. Permanent map set, I'm going to select, turn off the toggle, I'm going to select surface, elevation, and surface. You can also go ahead and select land cover. So here's my elevation map. I'm going to zoom to it. Right click, zoom to. Now I want to set my region to this map to limit raster operations just to this area. So right click, set computational region from selected map. This will also set the resolution to the resolution of this map, which is one foot. Now, we also want to set a raster mask. We can do this by clicking on raster and going to mask, the command is r.mask. We're going to use a vector mask, so we're going to go to the second tab, and we're going to use the shoreline as our mask. So all operations will be within the mask, limited to within the mask. So right now, We have the digital elevation model here and the digital surface model. The digital elevation model and the digital surface model are the values represent the height above sea level. What we want to find for the trees is the height above the ground. So the ground is this map, elevation 2017. And the height of the trees is represented above sea level here on the surface 2017 map. So we can find the height of the trees above ground by subtracting uh, elevation from surface. And we can do this with map algebra. So we're going to use the raster map calculator. We can find it here under raster. Raster map calculator. Or we can use the command r.mapcalc in the command console. Here's the raster map calculator. We have our operators on the left. We have our output at the top and operands here, functions. So first of all, we need to create a name for the output. I'm going to call this new map height above ground. And I'm going to insert an existing map surface 2017 and I'm going to subtract elevation from the surface so I use the operator subtract and I pick the map elevation 2017 and now I run the command and make sure I move it to the top of my layer manager and I'll see the result. Let's add a color table to this and raster legend. Height above ground 
optionally set a font. And you can see our ground where it's purple is at zero going up to the top of the trees and the buildings at up to 128 feet. It's a few very high points here. Now we can see the height of the trees, but we're on a map with other continuous data. We're combining ground, buildings, and trees, and any other objects. So how can we extract these trees? An easy way is to use the land cover map. We can use map algebra to extract the trees from the land cover map. As I already showed you, trees are category one. We can see this by querying the map with a query tool. Click on the green and you'll see value one for tree canopy. We could also add a raster legend. And we can see that the trees are category one. So let's extract them with map algebra. You go to raster, raster map calculator, and for the output, we'll call this canopy. And we're going to use an if then else statement. We're going to insert the existing map, land cover 2014, and we're going to put it inside a function. So from the function list, you'll see if x, a, b. This means the x is the if statement, a is then, and b is else. So if land cover 2014 equals equals one. We use the equals equals sign for equals to. Comma, that's our first part of the statement. If land cover 2014 equals one, then after the comma, what are we gonna do? We're gonna write a value of one. Else, if land cover 2014 is not equal to one, we're going to set null value no data. We'll use the null function. You can see that under map functions here. Null. This, the parentheses show that this is a function and it doesn't need any input. And we close this with a final parentheses to close the open parentheses at the beginning of the if statement. And we run this. And the yellow is the extracted trees. We'll hide the land cover, and we can see our extracted trees here. If we want to change the color of this, in this case, we should right click, go set color table interactively. We can set it to black for now. We only need to change the value for one. So we can see the only value in the map is one. Everything else has no value or null data. It pops out a little better. So we've used map algebra to extract the forest canopy. Now we'll use map algebra to assign a height to the tree canopy and nothing else. So we'll, once again, we'll use the raster map calculator. I'm going to go to the console. I'm going to type in r.mapcalc. My output 
is going to be canopy height. Again, we're going to use an if then else statement. So if and this time we're going to check for null cells. So we want to find all the cells that don't have forest canopy to, to begin with. And we're going to get make sure we assign these null cells. So if is null, this is another function. You can see it here under insert functions. Is null x. So it takes an input. So if the map canopy is null, then what should we do? We're going to write null values. Else, we want to write the values from height above ground. And we close the statement with a final parenthesis. Now, let's run this. And there is our height above ground. We can add a legend to this or query it to check some of the values. We may also want to adjust the color table. So I'm going to right click on canopy height, set color table. We can pick a color table. Well, right now we have Viridis. It's got some green in it, so it's somewhat suitable. We could change it, for example. Try um, to Inferno. And I'm going to set a histogram equalization. Now we could add a color table to this. A legend. So I'm going to add canopy height. Set my font. And I can see my elevation values for the trees that were extracted. This might be helpful for management of the park. Now, let's try to do all of that map algebra in one command. So we're going to replace the canopy height map by running the raster map calculator. So rather than doing three steps to first extract the height above ground, then the forest canopy, and then the height of the forest canopy, we're going to write this all in one expression. So in the map calculator, make sure you allow overwrite with the allow output to overwrite files. And I'm going to call this map the same thing as last time, canopy height. And we're going to write all three parts in one expression. So if land cover 2014 equals 1, what are we going to do? We're going to write surface 2017 minus elevation. 2017 to find the height above ground. And if elevation, if land cover does not equal one, our else statement, then we set a null value. Make sure to put your closing parenthesis at the end here. Let's run that. And there's our canopy height map. So we can write all of this in one step. A more complicated expression. 
Now, let's have, do one final step. We're going to extract the buildings from the land cover to make a figure ground map. A map of the buildings, a map of built versus unbuilt land in nice and high contrast. This is very useful for studies of urban morphology. A famous example is the Noli map of Rome from 1748. I highly recommend the book The Genealogy of Cities by Charles Graves, um, which has over 500 maps of cities in the world um, at different scales as figure ground. Okay, so let's start our raster map calculator, r.mapcalc. We're going to call this new map figure ground. Our expression is going to be an if then else statement. So if land cover 2014 equals five for our buildings, then we're going to write a value of one. If you want to um, assign a category with our category, you might from the land cover map, you might want to choose five instead of one. But we're not going to bother with that. So if land cover 2014 equals five, write a value of one, else write nulls. layer manager and hide the land cover map. Let's right click on figure ground, set color table inter interactively, and we're going to change the color for the value of one to black. Apply, and there's our figure ground. This is showing build versus unbuilt space. You may, for example, also want to represent the, uh, the water as gray. I'm going to add the forest canopy, and for contrast, we're going to represent this in red. So right-click on the forest canopy, set color table interactively, change the value to a red. So this map will represent built versus open space and ver built versus unbuilt versus forest canopy. And just export your map as a JPEG or a PNG. You can choose the save display to file OK, and save this as a map. Figureground.png, for example. If you want to save the layout of the map windows here, you can go to File and the State of the Layer Manager workspace. Save as and save a grass workspace file, a .gxw. And that concludes today's tutorial.